This past week is one of the best weeks I've had in Monster Hunter World. We dug for gold, we met three kings, the kitty turned into uh, some kind of specter, I got to ride a pony while being chased by a massive pickle, we learned how to cook, and we made so many friends. Pidgey hunts. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World where I play through all of Monster World trying to hunt every monster and then share my thoughts in these journals. We are now in journal number 16 I think in total over a hundred hours and this past week I actually streamed three times because I discovered an entire new aspect of this game I don't even I didn't even know existed and uh, th this game is the game that keeps on giving like I just love everything about this game everything I'm finding. So let's go in order, starting with the multiplayer stream. Uh, it was finally unlocked that I could go against Cool uh, Cool Teroth, I think is what it's called. And this one, I knew some people were disappointed that I went into Iceborne without doing the Cool Teroth challenge first. Uh, it just didn't work out in terms of timing, but on su last Sunday, I finally was able to play it. We got everybody in, and to be fair, we went to, um, uh, what's it called, high rank. I forget why we went to high rank, but we chose high rank first because I think everyone said that was the better introduction to Cool Taroth. We got 16 players in the lobby, and because we were a little bit overpowered and I didn't want to deal with all the, the armor and the weapon stuff, we all said everybody has to go with Hunting Horn. So we all went with 16 Hunting Horns to doot and boop this Cool Taroth. And I have to say, just like initial impressions of this monster, so majestic. It is big. I love my monsters big. This thing was massive. It had like a huge amount of gold like a long tail and what I like even more is I think I've shared this in a journal at one point I love breaking things off of monsters and cool of Taroth is all about breaking you're mining this monster for gold essentially and then chasing it for more gold you're just like screwed with your like well in our case with our hunting horns just being like more gold more gold um interesting mechanic with the whole pursuit so the first time you encounter it you go through this whole thing and you only have a certain amount of time that you can fight it and try to do as much damage as you can. And then you like level up the pursuit level. And the more you level up the pursuit, the more time you get to fight it, if I understood correctly. So I had to go in, I think, two or three times. Uh, and then we were, of course, all pretty strong that we, we knocked it out. Uh, I was really shocked when the gold, like the entire gold shed, and we just got like a fast, cool Taroth. And it was so majestic and so beautiful. Like it had like the perfect, like shiny skin to it. Everything about this monster was cool. I, I wish there was a single player version. And I think a lot of you are like probably going like, ho, 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 you can do single player. But from what I hear, it's quite the grind. So I'm not sure if I'm ready to sign up for that or if that's legit. Because this, this was a unique monster that was designed for 16 players. So I'm not sure if it's even feasible to do it single player if there's any fun like i hear it's just not fun so i'm not really interested in doing things that are just not fun uh but cool taroth beautiful beast beautiful monster uh as i'm recording this i do not remember what the armor <laughs> looks like so i cannot comment on it sorry um all i know is that if i would have loved it it probably would have stood out more in my head then the other highlight uh of the stream was we three kings which was the final quest we did where we had to fight in the arena, we had to fight a master rank Kirin, a master rank um, Kush Kushala, and a master rank uh, Tos 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 Thira. Uh, that the first group that went in, we got killed on Kirin. Kirin wiped actually everyone else but me. Everyone else fainted but me. But don't worry, Kirin gets his vengeance in this journal. Just hold on. Uh, and then we went back with another team, or I think we went back with another mindset. We were more prepared, and we went in and we just cleared the three kings. But man, that was a tough fight. Uh, oh, and then I got shout out to my Regal Eagle, AKA multiplayer, uh, the other player who is also maining as a switch ax because we were just like jumping on these monsters together and both doing like invasions and sitting, no, not invasions, sensations. zero sum discharges. Uh, and it was like really cool. I could only imagine a fight with four switch ax users that are so like coordinated that you can start like almost making a dance of like just them shooting off like one after the other off a monster and you have like almost like a symphonic switch axe performance going on if there's if there are players out there that are good enough to synchronize switch axes like that i would love to see it even if it's like pulled off twice in a fight that would be beautiful um so the progression stream of this week was filled with challenge I l like the challenge that i love and i didn't fight many monsters but the ones that i did fight Oh man, I had been waiting a while to like, these were not new monsters. I knew about them and I was finally at the point where I could actually take them on. Starting with 
the greatest Jagras. We've waited weeks for the greatest greatest Jagras. My hunter rank is finally 50, so I could take him on. What a big monster, but more so, what a, this one hurt. And everybody got me to kind of level down to what my high rank armor was. So I swapped out my master rank for high rank armor. I think I kept my switch axe the same way. It was hitting too hard. I died to vomit twice pretty quickly and I was not doing a lot of damage on Great Jaggers. Cool that I understand now why we were like, this is the fight you farm for decorations because when he pukes, there's just sparkles everywhere. But after two faints, I'm like, I am not going to succeed. Uh, and I did not want to grind Great Jaggers all night. I went back, I got my master rank armor and people are like, whatever, do what you want. Some were saying it's overpowered. Some are says it won't make a difference. It made a huge difference. I was actually able to go back into the fight and we got distracted by a tiny Devil Joe. I think it was a small silver crown Devil Joe. So we, we went off and we fought him. And then we came back, we finished Great Jagras with uh, my switch. It was still a challenge even with my Master Gear, but I was a lot less squishy, which was just what I needed um, to overcome that. But man, what a massive, massive beast. I love these oversized fights. Then we continue the story with Black Veil Valhazak. And this is my second time fighting a Valhazak. And the first time, if you remember, I was like, oh, if only I knew about the whole effluvium and the resist. Well, now I knew. So before going into the fight, I equipped all the decorations to give me effluvian resist or effluvian immunity. And as I expected, it made the fight almost completely like non-challenging in the sense that I wasn't, I was still taking damage from the cloud, uh, but I was taking a lot less damage than the first time I fought him. And I thought he was fairly like manageable the first time when I didn't have the resist. So now that I had it, and that I'm better with my switch axe, it was way easier of a dance to get through it. This version, Black Veil Valhazak, looks way better. Uh, it's so cool with the like mushroom spores and the fact that we're fighting them in the forest. I really, really like the fact that this felt like an invader that doesn't belong. He was killing everything. In the Rotten Veil, he felt like he belonged there. In the forest, it felt like he did not belong here and he was like infecting everything around like you could even see like little jagrasses they were like getting all sickly and stuff it was just so cool and at one point he shed like the mushrooms and you could see like how beautiful the original like valhazak body was and just like i was just admiring the the the, the ecosystem and the beasts that were being introduced to me this past week just really good fight i, I enjoyed it after that um i knew i had to go take on a master rank kieran which actually i don't know if it was a story if it was part of the story to take him on, if it was optional. Either way, somehow I ended up in a master, in a master rank Kieran fight. Uh, so I knew he was thunder, so I got all the thunder resist. And we actually took the time. So chat has been telling me, some people in chat have been telling me to, um, specifically Kustos has been telling me to, instead of going to the cantina and just getting the full course meal, take the time to build the skills you want. So now I know how to make my own custom platters. I learned that I need like the gourmet voucher to get the HP buff. And depending on the colors of the ingredients and how many of them, you can see what feline skill you build so you can build your own thing. And I know guys, I know this isn't rocket science. I know that I could have learned this in the past couple months, but this was finally the stream where I'm like, this is worth my time to stop and, and study it and learn it. it. Took about 10, 15 minutes. And I feel like I've leveled up where now I actually saw all the ingredients in my stores. I'm like, oh, I need some of this, some of this, and then we mix it all together. So I learned how to cook finally. We went into this Kirin fight with all of the chances on my side and I got slapped. I got slapped so hard. Kirin, the last time I only fought Kirin in low rank. I never fought Kirin in high rank. And then I fought him in master rank with three teammates. So I learned that he does the grid attack, which was new from low rank. So I already knew that was coming, but he was so damn fast and so aggressive. And I was getting literally slapped everywhere and I couldn't move fast enough. I couldn't get a lot of sword moves into him because I rely on my ax mode to be faster. And I really needed to be fast around him. I just don't feel maneuverable with the sword out. And that's probably a reflection on me, just not getting it there yet. And he, I carded twice and Oh man, this fight went on for so long. I think we made it to the point where I think I had five minutes left in the fight, if I recall right. Halfway through the fight, a savage Devil Joe 
shows up and I was like, I was literally like begging Chad, I'm like, how am I supposed to do this? How, what am I going to do? I'm getting slapped around by Kieran and now there's a savage devil Joe, which apparently like chases you across the map and now I have to deal with both. And people are like, kill both, kill both. Like that is the solution, kill both. I'm like, that is not an option. I can't do that. So honestly, I don't know how I dealt with it because I did not throw poop. I did not do anything. Uh, Kieran just ran away and I chased him. Luckily, Devil Joe did not follow for some reason. But um, the the coral, the coral, uh, why can't I remember what the name of the level? The coral, insert the rest of the word of that map, is so vertical. I climbed these vines so many times and the fact that you have the timer and it really plays into the next fight, aka Namiel, which was also on the same map. Oh my god, uh, finally by the last time I had to climb this thing, I learned about the beetle shortcut. I don't know if I had the most efficient way, but I climbed those vines manually so many times, I'm like, no more. I don't want to climb these anymore. Um, finally, within I think 40, 40 something minutes, Kieran fell. And I was at the point where I wasn't, it wasn't like Diablos where I was just like overwhelmed and demoralized and sad. Kieran made me angry. I was getting frustrated because my skills were not where I felt they should have been. And I never felt like that with a monster. Like when I met Diablos, my skills weren't where they should have been. And it was kind of a smack, oh, I have so much to learn. It's been a hundred hours. I feel like I've learned a lot. And to be at this point and going smack, you still have so much to learn. Instead of humbling me, it just made me angry. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not ready for you. Like. And anyway, so I killed it, and now I wear its its top and bottom specifically. It looks like my P, it looks like my like Playboy PJs, and that is entirely for bragging rights. Of like, I slayed you. I'm gonna wear you on my body. I'm gonna wear your corpse on my body because I'm a hunter, and that's what we do. It's it's the it's the only thing. It's an ego thing. I'm just wearing his his stuff because it I, it's not my favorite thing. It's an ego thing. It's better than the chaps. Then Namuel, and I I'm always surprised at this point when they introduce a new monster because. I, I'm not expecting it. Like, I haven't been shown new monsters. It's not like Volcana where you're like, oh, that's the monster we're working towards. And all the other monsters have been variants or subspecies. So I feel like, I feel like I've seen everything in the world. So every time I come across a new monster, I'm just like, where did this come from? How do, how do I just... And I know that there's still more, which gets me even more excited because I see question marks in my weapon tree. I've even seen some event quests with a name and I'm like, what is this name? I don't recognize this. Um, so Namiel, beautiful creature like cool like that black like it looks like batman from above but then you look below and it looks more like a rainbow um water blight has not been a thing i have experienced in a while in monster Hunter world so namiel taught me <clears throat> the water blight uh, pain for the most part it was a good fight it was a refresher after kieran uh, i had a lot less trouble dealing damage to namiel but still this fight went to the 40 45 i only had a few minutes left and uh, it's ultimate attack where it, like blasts like nukes with water the, the ground. I survived that three or four times. And I don't remember why. I remember the chat's like, how did he survive that? I was like, oh, that looked pretty bad. Um, I was, I must have had a skill or something that saved me. And I honestly do not remember what it is. Uh, someone in chat, I'm sure in the comments are gonna be like, it was this one, it was this one. Um, so whatever it was, awesome. Cause I got saved four times from fainting. Otherwise I would have died. I don't think I did faint. If I did, maybe once, but what I loved the most about this fight is I learned a new move. I don't have a name for it yet. I think I call it the wakey, the wakey wakey so far. Wakey wakey bangy, bangy wakey. We have to come up with a good name. So I place the two barrels next to the head and then I pull out my, I go into sword mode and I thrust in between the barrels, not touching them, do a zero sum discharge. So it blows up between the barrels, creating three explosions by the head. And I pulled it up the first time I stabbed the barrel by accident on Namiel. I did it perfectly. You had two barrels and I just went like whoop, right between the barrels. And it felt so good to pull that off. And it was the finisher, it killed it. I really hope you guys can see it on here because it was a really cool finisher. And then, so that was the end of the grind, screen, uh, grind stream. I was told that the next monster is the end of the story, which is crazy because I don't even know what this monster is, what it looks like, what to expect. So the next journal is going to be, I'm gonna have finished the story of Iceborne, which, I'm, I'm ready for it, but I know that there's so much after it. I'm ready for all the after stuff and that difficult stuff. That's going to be like a difficulty spike from what I heard. But 
Uh, after the grind stream, I was going through my achievements. I love my achievements and I'm at 45% steam achievements. That's 45 out of hundred. And as I was going through them, they're like, oh, an achievement for getting a treasure. And I was like, what treasure? Like, uh, there, there's three achievements. One for finding your first treasure, for finding many treasures, or for finding all the treasures. I was like, what are these treasures? So I actually looked it up and I learned that if you level up all your palicos, you unlock eventually a mission, you unlock the ability to find treasures in each region. I was like, what? That sounds super fun. So I launched up a Palico side quest stream on Saturday. And the whole goal of that was just to farm out the Palico gadgets, the things that so many of you have been telling me, hey, Classy could use another weapon instead of the Vigor Wasp, man. Like, come on. And I've been aware of it, but it never felt right to stop my progression to go and do that. So I just did a stream where all we did is we went in, I learned, honestly, I did not realize on the maps when you go like pick a place to go, that there's like a sub quest indicator saying like the lining researcher is here or the um, uh, endemic life researcher is here and they give you quests. I didn't realize that. And then I realized those quests open up other quest lines and then you get to like be friends with the different and like palicos and stuff or the gajalakas. Uh, from each region and then they give you something and then sometimes they unlock other quests that goes towards your quest completion so this was like a lot of fun for me i honestly did not know and then uh now i have to raise i think those factions to level six which will then unlock the treasure hunts for each one and uh i am just so looking forward to like i really love exploring the world the levels in this game um so i just love that i have this entire side quest thing which is filled with all these extra cutscenes and like side quests for me to find and do. So we're at step one where now we have befriended everyone we can befriend. Now it's all about leveling up that friendship um, so that we can then start finding treasures. I know it sounds like the treasures are not worthwhile. I'm entirely doing it for achievements and for experiencing parts of the games I was not familiar with before. So overall, just a good time learning more of the mechanics. And I have to say, I have played my multiplayer stream. I'm gonna say uh, my second multiplayer stream this week. I'm saving it for the next journal because we did some grinding, but I want to say I finally think I learned how to play sword mode more because my biggest issue now is I'm not dealing enough damage. That's why two of these fights went so long to 40, 45 minutes. And I'm told if I'm not doing more damage, my final fight with the story boss is not going to go well. So I got out of my comfort zone and I learned how to open up with the sword mode how to use sword mode more, how to switch to sword and axe. And I've been doing that in Rise a little bit more. And uh, I also grinded out a new axe, which we're going to talk more in the next journal. So my play style leveled up again. My knowledge of this game leveled up again. My experiences, it's just more, more stuff. Finding more things this far into a game is just such a treat. I just, I just love this so much. So I'll see you next time after I've completed the story of Iceborne. And until then, keep it classy.